Hi there. In this video, I will demonstrate on how to get started with the lathe machine. I will show you how to power up the machine. Check the cutters and the machine condition. Clamp the workpiece at the chuck. Mount tools at the quick change tool post and tailstock. Use hand tools. Set spindle speed. Move the tool. Remove chip safely and clean up the machine after use. The power for the machine is controlled with the isolator switch. Switch it on and the machine power lamp and spindle speed indicator will be lit. Before using the machine, check its condition. Ensure the tailstock stopper is present, as this prevents the tailstock from sliding off the bed. Test the tailstock brakes to ensure the tailstock locks in place. Pull down on the lever to slide the tailstock and push up the lever to lock the tailstock. Keep the coolant switch in the off position and push away the coolant spout. The coolant is only used in selected operations. To set the spindle speed range, ensure the spindle is turned off and move the tool post away. Flip open the safety guard to rotate the spindle by hand. As the spindle is rotated, switch the gearbox lever to high speed range, indicated by the red arrow. When the spindle is switched on, the speed can be adjusted using the knob. The high speed range is from 500 RPM to 3000 RPM. The gearbox can also be switched to the low speed range, indicated by the blue arrow, while rotating the spindle by hand. When the spindle is switched on, the speed can be adjusted. The low speed range is from 100 RPM to 500 RPM. When switching the gears, ensure the gears are fully engaged. If not, the gears will grind when rotated. Do not switch on the lathe machine if the gears are not fully engaged. You will damage the machine. Do not leave the gearbox in neutral. A free spinning spindle indicates the gearbox is not fully engaged. You may need to rotate the spindle an additional round to fully engage the gear. To check all machine safety devices are in working condition, firstly, move the carriage away from the chuck. Secondly, set the spindle speed range to low. Finally, lower the safety guard and switch on the spindle. Ensure the spindle is rotating at low speeds. Opening the safety guard. Pressing the e-stop button. Or, stepping on the foot pedal will cut power to the motor and stop the spindle. If the machine does not stop, power off the machine and inform a SP staff immediately. To clamp the workpiece onto the chuck, firstly, open the jaws using the chuck key placed in the key socket. Rotating the key counterclockwise will slide the jaws out. Secondly, place the workpiece into the chuck. Finally, close the jaws by rotating the chuck key clockwise to clamp the workpiece. Check to ensure the workpiece is clamped in the center. This example shows poor clamping, as the workpiece is clamped off-center, in between two jaws. Although it seems rigid, the workpiece wobbles when the spindle is switched on. This is another example of poor clamping, as the workpiece is not clamped in the chuck at all. This is dangerous, as the workpiece can fly off the chuck. To clamp a longer workpiece, a center hole must be drilled at the face of the workpiece, for the revolving center to sit in. The workpiece is clamped with a short overhang for facing and drilling. A center drill is used in a drill chuck mounted on the tailstock to create a center hole. Then the workpiece is unclamped, extended out, and reclamped. The revolving center mounted on the tailstock is extended forward to support the workpiece end. Ensure the quill is extended sufficiently and locked to prevent the quill from retracting. Check the clamping by rotating the chuck by hand. 
Before using any cutting tools, check their conditions. There must not be any significant damages. The inserts must not be chipped, broken, or missing. If you come across any damaged, loose or missing insert, do not use the tool and inform an SP staff immediately. Inserts that show signs of use is normal. Some inserts can be fragile, while others are tougher and held rigidly. This parting insert is held in the insert holder using a simple press fit clamp. Due to the design of the holder, the insert can slip out if used with heavy cuts. The facing and turning insert, as well as the grooving insert, are held in their respective insert holders with a screw tightening clamp. This design holds the insert well, even in heavy cuts. You must use the tools for its intended design purpose. Misusing tools may damage the tool and cause injuries to you and others. These cutting tools are mounted into a tool holder to be used at the quick change tool post. Based on the cutting process, select the correct tool and mount it to the tool post. To mount the tool, slide it into the tool post with the correct tool orientation and rotate the cam lock with a square socket spanner to lock the tool holder in place. Ensure the height adjustment knob is in between the cam lock when rotating it. This shows an incorrect tool mounting. The cam lock is not holding the tool holder correctly. The tool can slip off the tool post. To unmount the tool, the process is reversed. Rotate the cam lock and slide out the tool. The quick change tool post can be rotated by loosening the hexagonal nut on the top with a hexagonal socket spanner. The tool post can be locked into position by tightening the nut. Next, after mounting the tool, the tool height must be checked using a center mounted on the tailstock. This is to ensure the tool is aligned to the center of the workpiece. If the tool height is too low, the cutting rake angles will be incorrect. If the tool height is too high, the tool is rubbing against the workpiece. The tool must be at the correct height to ensure good cutting operations and accurate workpiece dimension control. Once ready, unlock and rotate the tool post to point the tool towards the center and lock the tool post. Move the tool post using the cross slide to position the tip of the insert at the tip of the center. Move the carriage, if necessary, to move the tool. The insert tip must be in line with the center tip to indicate that the tool is in line with the chucks and tailstock's center line to ensure correct cutting action. If the tool tip is not in line, loosen the headless screw in the height adjustment knob and loosen the cam lock to rotate the adjustment knob on the tool holder. Turn the knob clockwise to raise the tool. Lock the cam lock to lock the tool holder and check the tool tip against the center. Orientate yourself to look at it on the same plane as the tool height to prevent parallax error. Do not look at the tool from the top as this view is inaccurate. If the tool needs to be lowered, loosen the cam lock and turn the height adjustment knob counterclockwise. Lock the cam lock and check again. Notice how the tool tilts down when the cam lock is unlocked. Checking the tool height when the tool is unlocked is incorrect. Thus, always lock the cam lock before checking the tool height. After attaining the correct tool height, tighten the headless screw in the height adjustment knob to prevent the knob from rotating. Double check the tool height again. This second check is to ensure that during cutting operations, the tool height is accurate. The tool height will be retained even when the tool is removed as the adjustment knob is locked. All tools must be adjusted to the correct tool height. If the tool height is incorrect, the workpiece cannot be machined accurately as the tool movements will not correlate to the dial reading. Furthermore, during facing, there will be material left behind as the tool is unable to reach it. 
When using the facing and turning tool, rotate the tool post slightly and lock it. This will create a 3 to 10 degrees side clearance angle between the workpiece and the edge of the insert. This angle allows the tool to cut the workpiece without rubbing against it and create better surface finish with good chip flow. If there is no clearance angle, the tool will rub against the workpiece and damage itself and the workpiece finish. When using the grooving and parting tool, the tool must be perpendicular to the Z-axis. Rotate the tool post till the tool is perpendicular and tighten the tool post. You can check the perpendicularity by moving the tool to the workpiece before locking the tool post. A grooving tool mounted accurately will be able to machine a groove perpendicular to the cylindrical surface. While a parting tool will be able to part a workpiece with a flat surface. Besides using tools at the quick change tool post, other tools such as a drill chuck and center can also be mounted on the tailstock. Before installing a tool in the tailstock, extend the quill beyond 30 millimeters. Select the necessary tool and ensure the Morse taper on the tool and the tailstock is clean and clear of any debris. Slot in the tool into the quill with a little force. To remove the tool, retract the quill while supporting the tool. A pin within the quill will push out the tool. Some tools like this drill chuck has flats which must be aligned. After extending the quill, to ensure a positive lock, rotate the chuck in the quill till it is able to slide in fully. Then, slot in the tool into the quill with a little force. Check the installation of the tool by pulling it. The tool must not come off and should slide the tailstock. To remove the tool, retract the quill while supporting the tool. A pin within the quill will push out the tool. A keyless drill chuck is used to hold a center drill bit to drill pilot or center holes. It can also hold a twist drill bit to drill blind or through holes. When using the keyless drill chuck, rotate the hood counterclockwise to open the jaws. Place the center drill bit into the chuck and close the jaws by rotating the hood clockwise. Ensure the drill bit is in the center while closing the jaws. This is the same method to install a twist drill bit. These are examples of poor installation of the twist drill bit and center drill bit. These bits are not in the center of the jaws. The bit and workpiece will be damaged during operation. Due to high cutting forces, it is important that all tools are installed correctly. Any incorrectly installed tool will dislodge during the cutting process and cause injury.